Having taught golfers of all abilities and been lucky enough to play with some of the best golfers in the world, in this video I'm going to show you exactly what all good golfers do with every single club in that golf bag. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome back to Get Good at Golf. On this channel we aim to help you get good at golf just one day at a time. Guys, we also have a new channel membership available, so if you do want to see that, make sure you check out the link below. That's just going to be bonus content for you, extra content. We're going to have Q&As, we're going to have products of the month, we're going to have tips of the month. We're also going to have some little kind of matches as well. So the first tip that I want to give you today is about irons. This is something which all good golfers do, and some high handicap kind of beginner golfers maybe struggle to do a little bit. So we're going to tee off here at the first hole at Woolley Park Golf Club, and I've got a five iron. Now, just because it's a five iron doesn't mean I treat it any differently to maybe a more lofted iron, you see. Just because there's around 23, do you think, Chris? Degrees of loft on there, maybe 24, 25? Yeah. On the average five iron, it doesn't mean I need to help it up in the air. It doesn't mean that I need to add more loft dynamically here, because you see what happens to my body there. You'll see that I'll end up duffing that ball. I'll end up not getting the strike that I want. I'm still going to compress this into the turf. I'm also going to kick it off the tee there, so that... And if anyone's wondering why James's voice is a bit off today, he's still recovering from Manchester United. <laughs> it was the derby, wasn't it? And we went. So should we put that on as well, Chris? We'll edit that we'll in. get that on there. But generally what I'm going to do, guys, and what all good golfers do, they make sure the ball position is A, correct, but B, consistent. If your ball position changes so often when you are playing golf, you're going to really struggle to designate the right low point, to designate the right angle of attack, to get the shot that you want. So for me, mid to long iron, I'm going to go just forward of centre here. I'm going to load up to the top of the backswing and I'm going to make sure that on the way down, I get a ball, then turf contact. That's something which so many not quite established golfers really struggle to get. And generally you want a divot pattern like this. So you'll see that was a lovely strike. That's middle of the fairway. And my tee peg was here. So you'll see there that I've taken the ball, then I've taken a little bit of a divot, and you'll see that that divot is pointing just to the left-hand side of where I wanted to go. Good shadow work there. Shocking shadow work. That's because the club is moving around my body on an arc. I don't need to try and throw the club out to the fairway. Just let the club work around your body, and the loft will let the ball set off on the target line that you desire. Guys, let's have a look at some more clubs in that bag and see exactly what all good golfers tend to do. Okay, so like James mentioned there, we're all thinking about memberships. We're wanting to give you a little bit more. We want to give you what you want to see. So comment below, guys, what kind of extra content do you want to see? We're going to have some members' polls on there to say, do you want certain shot tips, any kind of lies that you're struggling with, Q&As about anything and all different new clubs, ways to swing the club, ways to get out of the bunker, ways to put all different things. So comment below guys and let us know what you want to see. It's going to be a little bit of a Sunday club. You may have noticed that we have kind of gone back a little bit on the daily content because I feel like we're not kind of giving you guys exactly what you do want. So if you want a video every Sunday, like I said, it might be a product of the month, it might be a tip of the month, it might be a nine hole match, and it might well be a Q&A. Get in the comments below and let us know what you'd like to see. So guys, when we're talking wedges, James has just gone through a thing that we see from a lot of amateurs when it comes to full swing. When we come to wedges, there's one thing that we see a lot. And over time, both me and James have seen this kind of setup where, you know, we've only got 30 yards. But if you look from a distance, it would look like you're trying to hit maybe a full shot. I see this so often. And then from there, everyone gets off, loses the balance, low point moves. We've shifted off just like we would with a full swing and we can never get that weight back to the golf ball. So we get inconsistent strikes, we can't get it nice and crisp, and then we can't control our flight, spin, or distance. So if you do watch a lot of golf on TV, you'll see a lot of players, and the way to be consistent on TV is getting the stance nice and close together. You and see, give your shoes a clean. They do need a spring clean, to be honest. But a bit close together there, round about a club width apart. What it's going to do is, if we have any kind of movement off the ball, we're going to start to fall. So I can control where my sternum is. We want our sternum to be just ahead of the ball, so my weight's ever so slightly left. Feet, feet nice and close together and left foot turned out. From there, it's much easier for me now to get this body working better. We're focusing on the turn and rotation instead of what a lot of people do when they focus on what the hands are doing. We see a lot of 
wrist reactions when people come. I've got no confidence. I'm just throwing my hands at it. We want to get you into this nice, solid setup now. Weight ever so slightly left. And then all we need to do is turn back and turn through. And you'll see. Oh, Ooh. we'll have a nice control. And mainly there, start direction. The biggest thing that we see from amateurs is start direction. We could have then hit, chipped into that bunker. We could have chipped it left. We closed the face down. We don't have any control on where that ball's going. And from here, guys, we're not expecting to get up and down every time. But if we give ourselves an outside chance at a putt, we're on the green. We're going to hopefully lower your scores. I'll do it like that. Yeah. So, guys, what we see on the putting green is that very grip there. So, very much like what you do with a full swing. Everyone interlocks or overlaps. They take it very much like they would with a full shot. And what we see there is it often brings the arms not having connection with your chest. So I'm very much elbows out there and we start to see the dreaded figure of eight stroke. So we have no control on the face, no control on the path. And a lot of the times we're also strangling that club. So we're thinking it's like an iron, we're swinging it at 90 miles an hour. And we, we're very jerky and where that goes, no control. So what we want to do guys is want to feel like it's in the palm of your hands. So we're gonna make sure when we come around, it's a lot more into the palms and the fingers are wrapped around so even if you interlock you want to get it more underneath the grip you'll feel then that your biceps are much more connected to your chest and from where james is stood there you can see it creates a little bit of an arc on the way back back to square and a little bit of an arc on the way in so for the guys who are thinking straight back and through that is in a way but it has to have that little bit of arc because of the lie angle of the putter this is going to arc inwards back to square and in on the way through. So it's straight back and through on the arc of the putter. So if I get the club more in the palms, I can get that more round. From here, I can make a nice solid motion, working the big muscles, so working my chest, just like short game, get it turning. Never up, so never in. Slightly under pace, guys. So think about that, think about what your grip is. Are you strangling the putter? Are your elbows and arms disconnected? Do you see the figure of eight? If you do see that, Let's get it more into the palms of your hands, even with an interlock grip or whatever you may do. Arms connected to the chest. Start to use the big muscles, start to use the chest, and we'll be a lot more consistent. Again, on start line, I just need to work on my pace. I'll give you that one, Chris. Thank you very much. So that is all good and well. Yes, it is nice to hold a few putts. Yes, it is nice to strike. Your iron's good, but what about big dog so all good golfers generally do this guys and it is such a game changer if you're not doing this already so you'll see that i've teed that ball up nice and high there half the ball is over the equator of the driver which is exactly what we do want now the big reason for this is that we're going to hit the ball on the way up so we're going to hit it after the low point of the drive now what that means is i told you earlier on on that first tee that we're going to hit ball then turf so the low point would be after the ball with a driver, we want that low point pre-impact. We want it before the ball, before the impact, so we can then sweep the ball on the way up. That's going to lower spin rate. It's going to make sure we get a nice neutral launch angle, and it's generally going to make sure you hit your longest possible drive. What has to happen for us to do this? Generally, ball position needs to be forward. Obviously, if I had the ball position back, I'd really struggle to get that low point pre-impact. I'd have to really move my body off it sternum stays behind the ball if the sternum moves in front of the ball then we're going to hit ball then turf that's going to be more like if you do come across it and hit a bit of a slice so if the ball position's right the sternum's right and then the weight transfer just gets moving nicely so that it gets onto the left side with your sternum behind the ball we should generally be able to hit drives like that since i did that my golf game changed dramatically and that's one of the things which all good golfers do and people who are trying to be good golfers generally struggle with off the tee. Now, there's another tip, guys, and this is one of the biggest tips that could help get you good at golf. So there's lots of reasons why golfers may want to hit a fairway wood. It may be because you're not comfortable hitting a driver off the tee. It may be because you've absolutely smashed your driver down a par five and you want to get on there in two. It may just be because you've bought a new three wood and you really want to have a go with it. So generally what we're going to do here is make sure that we get all the launch angles correct for this three wood to launch up in the air. The last thing you want to do is top it. I've seen so many people who set up for the golf ball thinking, right, I'm going to play safe, get this ball in play 
and generally hit that shot there and it's just getting past the red tees so i feel like i've really let myself down there what happened to my body when i hit that shot chris what happened what did i do so we can see there nicely james had no weight transfer so watch from the top here he was coming down his body stays way behind sternum was behind i don't mind that but i'm edging away i'm trying to help the ball up in the air we spoke about iron loft on that first tee so this three wood has 14 and a half degrees of loft believe it or not that's still plenty of loft to get this ball airborne and to get it traveling towards your target so if i do have another ball which is proving to be difficult this one will do all i'm going to make sure i do is get that weight transfer in there i'm still going to have the ball position forward i still want to sweep it off the tee i don't want to hit down it I don't want to hit a Sergio Stinger. I want to make sure I have a nice shallow takeaway, a nice shallow angle of attack, and present that loft dynamically to help get a lovely big high ball flight down that fairway. Guys, that is five things that all good golfers generally do with every single club in the bag. I hope it's helped you guys. If it has, smash that subscribe button below. If you want to see more bonus content, check out the memberships that are coming very, very soon. Apart from that, I'll see you all day after tomorrow. Bye.